There are many different conditions that will affect blood pressure. The most common reasons you'll encounter significant changes in blood pressure in the diving setting are with heart attack, severe bleeding, or shock. While it isn't important for you to understand each of those conditions or to diagnose the meaning behind blood pressure changes, you should know what normal blood pressure ranges look like and be able to report any abnormalities to medical authorities. In taking a blood pressure, you'll record two numbers, the systolic and the diastolic pressure. These are typically shown as a fraction with the systolic over the diastolic. A typical blood pressure is around 120 over 80. The systolic pressure is the amount of pressure exerted against the artery walls when the left ventricle of the heart contracts, distributing blood throughout the body. You will record the systolic pressure when you first hear a sound through the stethoscope as you release the pressure on the blood pressure cuff. The diastolic pressure is the amount of pressure on the arterial walls between beats when the left ventricle is at rest. You arrive at this reading when you can no longer hear a heartbeat through the stethoscope. Normal ranges for adult systolic pressure are between 90 and 140. The normal ranges for diastolic pressure are between 60 and 90. Athletes tend to work on the lower end of those ranges. Ideally, everyone should be below 120 over 80. There are two methods to determine blood pressure. You will need a blood pressure cuff for both. The first technique is called auscultation. That means you'll be listening to the pressure through a stethoscope. All right, how you doing, Gina? Doing okay? All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and take your blood pressure. Just make sure you're doing okay after that dive. Just keep breathing that oxygen. Get you set up here. To begin with, make sure you have the proper blood pressure cuff. Okay. Do you want to go ahead and extend your arm out for me? It should wrap around the diver's bare upper arm about an inch over the antecubital space in front of the inside of the elbow. It should cover about two thirds of the upper arm. Many cuffs will have an arrow that points at the brachial artery. The cuff should be snug, but you should still be able to fit a finger under the bottom edge. Apply the stethoscope to the brachial pulse and the antecubital space. Hold the diaphragm of the stethoscope against the arm with your thumb or fingers. Listen through the stethoscope while you inflate the blood pressure cuff and continue 30 points past where you can no longer hear the brachial pulse. Deflate the cuff slowly, about two points per second, as you watch the pressure drop in the gauge. As soon as you hear two or more consecutive beats through the stethoscope, record the pressure. This is the systolic pressure. Continue deflating the cuff. When you can no longer hear the heartbeat through the stethoscope, record that pressure. It is the diastolic pressure. With children and some adults, you may hear sounds all the way to zero. In those cases, record the pressure when the sound changes from a clear tapping to a soft, muffled tapping. The other technique for measuring a blood pressure is by palpation or feeling. This is a useful technique in settings where the situation is too noisy to measure the pressure by listening. To begin, find the radial pulse in the wrist. Inflate the blood pressure cuff until you can no longer feel the pulse. Remember that number and then continue inflating the cuff about 30 points higher. Slowly deflate the cuff until the radial pulse returns and make note of that pressure. You will not be able to record the diastolic number using this technique. Record the pressure as 120 over P to show that it was measured by palpation. Leave the blood pressure cuff in place, but deflate it so you can take the pressure again later. You will want to record blood pressure every 15 minutes or so with a stable patient. If the diver is unstable, you'll want to record pressure every five minutes. 
Any change to blood pressure can be significant, so you need to record your findings along with the time they were taken.